Resident Evil 2 is one of those games where you beat it and go wow I definitely don't want to experience any of this in real life but in this game I'll experience it five more times thank you very much. Resident Evil 2 Remake as the name suggests is a remake of the original Resident Evil 2 and it was an instant hit and it brought many new eyes to Leon and Claire's story and on the whole series in general. With its fun and sometimes thought provoking gameplay, and I don't know if you have heard this, but this game is in my top 5 games of all time. So I thought let's make a video on why Resident Evil 2 Remake is a masterpiece. So strap your hip pouch, mix the green and the red herb, and let's get into this. You can also like and subscribe the video too, that will help a lot. The story of Resident Evil 2 is pretty straightforward. You play as either Leon S. Kennedy, who is uh, on his first day as a cop who is an absolute rookie, or Claire Redfield, who is uh, searching for her brother Chris Redfield, who, you know, is the main character of the first game, the game that launched the series into what is now known as Resident Evil. You are tasked to get out of the Raccoon City Police Department, which is crawling with zombies, liquors, and zombified dogs, even more things are roaming around, god-awful abominations. Along the way you'll meet a lot of characters and a lot of antagonists, one which I have a special section in this video for. Can you guess who that is? Comment if you did. Once you do get out, you take a detour right into Umbrella's laboratories, where you find out how the virus spread, you know, the virus that infected and turned everybody into zombies. Turns out it's called the T-Virus. And long story short, we find out that William Birkin, the main antagonist of this game and the guy who developed the T-Virus, was planning to sell out Umbrella, the main bad guys of the Resident Evil series. But he was planning to betray them, they sent out their army for him. He ended up chugging a couple of the T-Virus samples, which some drops made it to the ground, some rats got there, and like the plague, during our great-great-grandfather's age, they spread it across the city, turning everybody into zombified creeps basically. Now your main objective of this, of this game is to escape from the underground labs and put an end to these evil bastards who poisoned this entire city. And by the way, the lab is now self-destructing because it's a Resident Evil game. Every freaking end mission place needs to self-destruct and you need to use an RPG. If not, that's not a Resident Evil game. But this leads you to two possible ending boss fights. It all depends on which character you chose in the beginning. If you chose Leon, you finally get to kill Mr. X who was chasing you around the whole police department. And thanks to a good rocket shot, you end up killing him. Or if you play with Claire, you have to fight William Birkin in his almost final stage using a minigun. I just realized that Claire actually outbeat or outguns Leon in this game. Leon was left with a pistol and a shotgun. Claire literally had a grenade launcher and a minigun by the end of the game. But long story short, they both end up victorious, Claire finds a way out, which is on a train. They both end up meeting, but they get stopped by William Merkin again. Yes, this guy is like an ex-girlfriend, he's more persistent than Mr. X, because you have a lot of encounters with him and a lot of boss fights, more than Mr. X, which is pretty insane. But long story short, they end up killing him finally, who he gets engulfed by flames, by the exploding laboratory. The game ends with Leon and Claire promising that they will put a stop to Umbrella and their bioweapons, and that's the end of the game. Yes, I know it's a pretty straightforward game. Uh, last video for the Resident Evil 4 Masterpiece video, it took me like a longer time to explain the story because more of it happened. Here is a straightforward, your main goal is basically to escape Raccoon City before it gets nuked. But in all seriousness, what makes this game so good and in, in my opinion a masterpiece is Freeze. I'll shoot. This game is one of the most replayable games. I don't find much of an issue with the A and B scenario. Yes, it could have been made way better with the story connecting better with the two characters, but with the item mix-ups, the weapon mix-ups and everything in all around in all four playthroughs I find it quite enjoyable and I think it had very good replayability. I'm sure I mentioned this but I have beaten this game roughly six times and I have enjoyed all of them. Leon's story in particular was more memorable and more favorable than Claire's but hers is also good adding a different spin and new characters she interacts with like the police captain Barnes or what was his name I don't know who is a freaking creep. We watch an alien burst through his chest just like in the movie Alien, which I've never watched, but I, I know that scene. And also, in the replayability, we still have 
the most beautiful, the most vicious, the most luxurious, the f most fashionable person in the whole game, who appears in every scenario, but he appears less in player scenario. And of course, I'm talking about the. Jesus Christ! Shit! Him again? Ah! Ah! Fuck! Oh! Sorry for yelling. Ah, I forgot about that guy. The tyrant, or Mr. X, as he's called in the community. As mentioned before, in this video and previous videos, he's the best stalker in all of the Resident Evil games I've played. Probably all of the games I've played, apart from Chris Walker, but I think Mr. X nudges him out. I'm talking about Chris Walker from Outlast, if you guys remember that game. Mr. X makes you think hard about your next move. It's even scary knowing that if you want to get past him, you will have to waste a huge amount of ammo just to stop him in his tracks. I'm not even joking when I say this, but he literally gave me a nightmare <laughs> a couple of weeks ago where he was roaming my house and in one part the lights cut off in my room or our library, I don't know where we were at, and everything got dark, I couldn't see crap because it was so dark and I just heard his footsteps. Those beautiful click clacks. And that's what's so great about this game, which I will talk about more later in the gameplay section, so stay tuned for that. But the atmosphere in this game has a... It's, it's very good, okay? Mr. X, plus the atmosphere, you hearing his footsteps are roaming around the, the whole facility. And plus, if you make too much noise, he knows where you are. So, you can literally be fighting a clicker, throw a grenade or something in its mouth. That explodes, you literally run out of the freaking room. Mr. X is already there, you made too much noise. Bang, you're dead. And sure, there were some scripting scenes and moments in this game with Mr. X. Like the part where you play as Ada, or the two main cast when you're... When he gets literally sliced and diced by William Birkin in the basement. There are some scripted scenes, but they're still more scary and more enjoyable than... I'm probably gonna get some hate for this, but Nemesis from the remake, the third remake. Stop it! Cut it out! I have a glandular problem! And to be honest, I find Mr. X more scary and creepy than Nemesis because of the way he is dressed and his size. Well, when I see Nemesis, I just can't help the beat of the thought of thinking like this guy's head looks like a worm that is deformed, if a worm can be deformed. But yeah, that's just me. Mr. X does also show up in some other game modes. Jesus Christ. The game does have a few DLCs, which are like fun game modes that are kind of free. I think they're free, I got them when I bought the game, so I don't know. One of the main DLCs is the Hunk DLC, where you play as Hunk, who I think his acronym stands for Human Unit Never Killed, or something like that. Basically, he's a total badass who is tasked with uh, taking a sample of the G-Virus, and you're, you're probably gonna go through every area in the game, but in like in 15 minutes. So yeah, every area you went through in the main game, you walk through that with Hunk in 15 minutes. You basically get to see how every soldier's body was literally killed. Also, there's another DLC where you get to play as the woman that was about to get taxidermied by the police captain commissioner, I don't know what he is, Barnes, the other guy I mentioned before. Then the other one, you literally play it's something similar to a Call of Duty Zombies mode, where you're in the gas station from the beginning where Leon and Claire meet. Play as a sheriff that gets bitten in the first 10 minutes of the game, and you try it out to survive rounds, each round getting harder and harder, which is a pretty cool game mode, I'm not gonna lie. I've seen a lot of people play that game mode, trying to get the platinum, and it did seem fun, and it was kind of fun, but I didn't get that much of the appeal of the game mode. I was more focused on the story elements, and I leave that out for later. But yeah, if you beat the main game, you still have some stuff to do, like game modes and DLCs, which are pretty cool. But what makes all of these things pretty cool is the gameplay. Jesus Christ! The gameplay of this game has to be one of my favorites. Unlike the newer remakes, this game makes you think when to use your bullets. You can legit enter a boss fight, and if you're not smart enough, you might be left without any ammo, causing you to use an older save or starting all over. Depends on your situation, but yeah, nonetheless, that would suck. The gameplay has great pacing, which some people say Mr. X ruins it because when he appears, it kind of slows down the pace or whatever because he appears in an RPD. It kind of pushes you down to not be as able and free to finish up your objectives. Like, it wasn't enough to have zombies and liquors, but Mr. X is there too. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I enjoy it. It makes this game better than it is. 
because you can appear from any corner and you can make your face miss some features some crucial features like nose eyes your brain and i have to admit the zombies and every other enemy do feel like bullet sponges at all times you will have to pray for a critical hit a lucky shot to the brain that will explode the brain the puzzles in this game are very fun except a few you'll have to use your brain for them the game vlogs the everything you just need to be focused on all around to pay attention but i won't judge anybody if they use the internet like me because i was burnt out like trying to think i just wanted to get there to the main objective and just finish up i'm not here to think where the horse puzzle of this chess piece is gonna be at i also like that the key items aren't separated like in resident evil 4 where you if you have a key the key is placed in a different inventory system while the guns and ammo and healing items are placed into a different one here everything is crammed down and you have to think what will i need for my next encounter do i take this book or do i take more ammo i don't know and depending on if you choose leon or claire you get different item placements and different weapons as i said before i have to admit leon was snubbed with the weapon choices making his journey way harder player gets a minigun and a grenade launcher while leon gets a shotgun and a pistol but he does get a magnum gun the map of the game is terrific i love walking through the rpd and how creepy everything feels you don't know if a liquor or a zombie will bust through somewhere building this hard tension in the atmosphere and you just don't know the atmosphere in this game is a 10 out of 10 I would compare it to something like Arkham Asylum. I see a lot of memes popping up of when the radio starts playing in the background on the speakers in Arkham Asylum, giving people nightmares. Pretty sure in a few years, people might make memes with this game. I'm not so sure what's gonna be captivating, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be Mr. X's footsteps. But in, in general, why I think this game is so great and why it's a masterpiece. Jesus Christ. The immersion. You feel trapped. You don't know if the ammo you have is enough. You don't know when Mr. X will appear next. And you don't know if you will be able to take another hit from him. As mentioned before, the item placement and you running around makes you feel true fear. It makes you think carefully about your next step and in the upcoming situations. And no joke, I consider this game the best Resident Evil remake and possibly the best Resident Evil game out there just because it's so cool. I like the setup of the characters. I'm pretty sure it got a lot of new people starting to play and enjoy the Resident Evil gaming series. I mean, this is my first ever Resident Evil game I've ever played. And after that, I literally completed the remake of the third game, the remake of the fourth game, and the original fourth game. Next up on the list are probably gonna be Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 8. I didn't have high expectations when starting this game, but I was blown away by it. The graphics, the voice acting. Yes, there's some cheesy dialogue in the game, but it's a Resident Evil game. Who's this? This is Sherry. Okay. I don't know if you expect some way, way, way super like high tier level dialogue, but what we have is very good. It's enjoyable. Everything mixed in together makes this game truly amazing. And it holds a special place in my heart because like Leon, when playing this game, I was starting on my job as well. So I kind of felt a weird connection with this game for some reason and that's why it holds a special place in my heart and I might be a bias towards it but I really like it and I really enjoyed it and I give it a 10 out of 10. And with that guys, thank you for 400 subscribers and this was Calypso with Resident Evil 2 and why it was a masterpiece.